gain better yields by protecting pollinators. My name is Mohamed Shukri. I have less than one hectare in Sattat region in Morocco. I also have a few sheep. I produce vegetables and fruits for my family and for the market. I am a fab farmer. That means I use enhanced planting instructions which sustain pollinators and natural enemies. These insects increase my income for free. Mohamed Shukri is right. His field hosts many beneficial uh, insects which increase uh, his yield in quantity and uh, quality. This film will show you a new approach uh, how protecting pollinators uh, will increase your income. The approach is called Farming with Alternative Pollinators, briefly FAP. My name is Stephanie Christmann. Uh, I developed FAP. In 2013, I started field trials in Uzbekistan, Central Asia. And since 2015, we do uh, field trials here in Morocco. We do uh, all field trials with real farmers on farm, nothing on station. Though the species are very different in Central Asia and here in Morocco, uh, FAP increases the income in uh, both sides, so FAP is replicable. Here in Morocco, meantime, we do trials with many different crops in four different ecosystems. The site for the semi-arid region is here in Sittat. Uh, the site for uh, mountainous regions is in Sefru. Adequate rainfall is at the coastal site in um, Kenitra, and we do the trials for um, oasis in Erashidia. This is my melon field. Melons and the other pollinator attracting crops around the field cover together 300 meters square. Also last year, I used this fab planting instruction and the research team compared the results of several fab melon farmers with several control farmers producing only melon in a field of 300 meters square. All farmers use the same inputs. On average, we fab farmers have around 50% higher net income from the entire field. Also from main crop, fab farmers had much better income per surface. However, we fab farmers invested only 15 dirhams more in seeds than the control farmers. That's all. Mainly pollinators make the difference. I never thought about their value, but now I'm aware of it. The fab melon fields also have less pests than fields producing only melon, so less, less need to purchase chemicals. This is better for health. I will later go around with you so you can see all the details in my field. Farmers will explain you how to protect wild pollinators and uh, natural enemies. These insects are an essential mobile labor force, free of charge. But they are under heavy threats. There are chemicals, tillage, uh, land use change, uh, more monocultures, uh, loss of habitats, uh, fragmentation of habitats and increasingly uh, climate change. Uh, so, in many countries, like for instance in Netherlands, in Great Britain, or uh, other countries with industrialized monocultures, there is heavy decline and rapid decline of pollinator diversity. And on the other hand, if the diversity of pollinators would be high, uh, they can increase a lot your income from the field. FAP is a low-cost approach. Um, if you use FAP uh, in your field, you will have a higher revenue uh, from your field and you might save also money for pesticides. Simultaneously, you contribute to the well-being of future generations and of our planet. Just learn the FAP approach, uh, as many other farmers did already. We will give you all the instructions on FAP uh, together with smallholder farmers. We will add some recommendations for large-scale farmers and we will show you the planting instructions for uh, smallholders um, as we hope that this film will be translated also to other languages. Uh, we will add some recommendations and tools which can help you uh, to use uh, all the instructions we developed here in Morocco, in Peru, Ethiopia, China, India or wherever you work uh, and produce. We will add also recommendations uh, for uh, policymakers from different sectors uh, because FAP includes a cross-sector policy mix which makes it possible to protect pollinators with very little money. Before we go back uh, to Mohamed Chukri to see his FAP melon field, let's first have a closer look at some very effective uh, wild pollinators. Uh, they can really increase your income, so don't kill them by pesticides, sustain them. 
One good message in the beginning, uh, wild pollinators usually are not eager to sting. Many of them don't even have a sting, so don't be afraid of them. My uh, colleague Patrick Lom, the Ikada bee ecologist, uh, will now show you some wild pollinators in detail. Capital bees are much bigger than honeybees. They can be either black or yellow. And because of their large size, they can carry a lot of pollen that makes them very efficient pollinators. They are especially efficient pollinators of crops like faba bean, eggplant, tomato, sunflower. However, because of their large size, they cannot pollinate small flowers with narrow tubes, such as most aromatic plants like sage or mint. Uh, Capital bees have a solitary uh, lifestyle and used to uh, chew holes in old wood to make the nest. They are also small campeta bees, much smaller than honeybees. They are often black, but can also be metallic blue or green. They are efficient pollinators of many crops, especially melon, like on this picture, but also pumpkin and zucchini and or fruit trees. They are solitary and nest in the stems of dead broken twigs of different plants, such as raspberry, rose, elderberry or blackberry. Bumblebees are much larger than honeybees. They are very hairy bees with often black, yellow, white or red bands. They are able to pollinate many different crops very efficiently. They are also very robust to cold temperature and are able to pollinate under the rain. They are also able to shake flowers by vibrating their wing muscles. We call it buzz pollination and that makes them very efficient pollinators of many crops, like for example eggplant, but also tomato or bell pepper. Bumblebees are social bees. Only the female will hibernate and build a nest for its colony. In spring, the females will uh, make their nests in abandoned holes of mice, but they can also nest under piles of wood or dead leaves. You are a very lucky farmer if, they, if their nest is close by. Flower bees are usually smaller than honeybees, but some are bigger. They are quite easy to recognize in the field because they fly very fast. They have many different colors. Some are gray and some are rusty red, like on these pictures. Because of their fairly small size and their long tongue, they are very efficient pollinators of many plants with narrow tube flowers, such as most aromatic plants like for example basil, sage, thyme, lavender. They are also very good pollinators of legumes like for example faba bean, grass pea or lupin. They are solitary and nest in the ground, but you can often find aggregations of hundreds of nests in a small area. Be aware that ground nesting bees are highly exposed to chemicals that accumulate in the ground. They are not only threatened by tillage, but also by the high loads of chemicals that accumulate in the soil over years. Sweat bees are small, much smaller than honeybees. They are often black, but sometimes with a bit of white, also some red, yellow, and some others are shiny green. They are very common and pollinate many different crops, especially the crops with open flower, like sunflower, zucchini, or fruit trees. They are also very useful for seed production, especially for carrots and onion. They are solitary and nest in the ground. You can notice the little amount of excavated soil at the entrance of the nest. Mining bees are smaller or up to the size of honeybees. They often have lightly first hairs of different colors, from brown, like on this picture, to red and gray. They pollinate many different crops, especially the crops with open flowers, like canola, sunflower or fruit trees like peach, cherry, apricot. All mining bees nest in the ground and are solitary. They often nest close to each other in aggregations of tens to sometimes hundreds of nests in a small area. So have a look before you plow a field edge, otherwise you might destroy some of their nests. Flower flies often mimic the color of bees, as you can see in this picture. And for these reasons, it's often difficult for lay people to differentiate them from bees in the field. However, it's important to take care of them as well. They are Many of them are more resistant uh, to cold than honeybees, and they are very good pollinators of many crops with open flowers, such as canola or fruit trees. They are also considered as the most important pollinators of strawberries. Some uh, flower flies also eat aphids as larvae, and so you benefit additionally concerning pest control. If you have a high butterfly diversity, your field or orchard is in good shape. Butterflies are very sensitive to habitat degradation, and so regard high butterfly diversity not only as beautiful, but as an acknowledgement for yourself as a farmer. It's an unwritten diploma for you, be proud of it. So uh, it's very useful to keep uh, all the tree trunks in your field or orchard, because this provides great nesting support uh, for wild bees. So you can see here, there's many holes that were made by wood bring beetles and, and some bees exploit these holes, these cavities to make the, to make the nests. 
Hi, I'm Ahlam Santil. I'm PhD student in Iki project. This is the first thing I learned. These insects are very beneficial insects. I did not pay attention to them before. Maybe I have recognized only honeybees and butterflies. However, together with the FAB team, I discovered how diverse they are. Some fly from one flower to the next quickly, others does not. Some pollinators transport more pollen than others. For some crops, wild pollinators seem to be even more important than honeybees. Here you see coriander, which was very effective. There you have anise, zucchini, sunflower, dill, and eggplant. For coriander, for example, and anise, they have the same uh, flower type, but they have different colors of petals. For instance, for dill and zucchini, they have different flower types, and uh, with these different flower types and different, different colors of petals, the field borders attract many and different insects to the field. Uh, many of these pollinators give service also to the flowers of melon. That is how they increase my yields. Meantime, I see different insects in each of these plants. Sunflower attracts many different bees, whereas coriander attracts much more different pollinators. Have a closer look and observe yourself. Uh, sunflower reduces also the wind. Pollinators don't like to fly in strong wind. It's hard for so little animals. The higher the diversity, the more pollinators move from one flower to another. The better is for the yield. Each flower gives a chance for a fruit. The fruit will only develop if pollinators are around and do the service of pollination. This is the water support. We used an empty 5 liter and an empty 1.5 liter water bottle and some stones to construct it. In summer, I fill the bottle once a week, whereas in spring it lasts for two to three weeks. Pollinators need to drink as well, as you see here. Some of these crops around the field, for instance coriander, they attract also many natural enemies. The ladybirds, for instance, eat a lot of aphids all over the field. Also wasps help me to save money and time for chemicals. When I spray chemicals, I lose both kinds of beneficial insects, wild pollinators and natural enemies. It takes a week or two until they return in high number. During those days, flowers are not or lately pollinated. So on top of the investment in chemicals, I also have less income for the flowers of that period. I think twice if it is worth it to spray chemicals. I'm uh, Dr. Smaili from INRA, Morocco. I highly support uh, Shukri uh, Mohammed. Pesticide uh, should be used uh, much more carefully and uh, the amount uh, might be uh, reduced. Look at these uh, common natural enemies. They help you uh, to reduce pests. Ladybirds are small and solitary insects, often red or orange with several black spots. As larvae and adults, they eat almost only aphids. Ladybirds consume up to 50 aphids per day, thus they help farmers a lot. The female can lay hundreds of eggs close to an aphid. When eggs hatch, the larvae can quick eat the entire colony or aphids. They usually go where aphids are. But you can attract more by fennel or dill. Stank bugs are useful. They are often brownish with black and yellow lines on the border of their body. Larvae and adults can eat insects much bigger than themselves. They like to eat caterpillars. Grain lice wings eat aphids, small caterpillars and beetles. You can attract them by caraway, coriander, dill or sunflower. As a Moroccan entomologist, I uh, recommend to all farmers uh, in all ecosystems to use FAD. We will give uh, all planting instructions to ONCA, the National Extension uh, Service. Onka also sent them to uh, smartphones. You will benefit from uh, better pollination uh, to many crops uh, and from better pest uh, control uh, anyway. Uh, you can enhance your income uh, with very little investment and uh, sustain, uh, sustain uh, these important uh, insects for future generations.
I recommend even uh, to farmers producing wheat, bar barley, durum, maize or uh, olives uh, contribute to pollinator protection by seeding strips of marketable habitat enhancement plants every 100 or 150 meters you will uh, enjoy better uh, natural pest control. Here in Setat, farmers grow mainly uh, wheat and barley and uh, this makes the situation difficult uh, for pollinators. Wild pollinators uh, depend on a small radius like 50 to 2000 meters and here in this area they will not find the nectar resources, pollen and uh, they will not find nesting site. And the Moroccan government expects that water scarcity will increase in the course of climate change. So the farmers might decide to shift from cereals to uh, vegetables or to fruits, which give a higher revenue uh, per drop. Therefore, it would be useful if the farmers now engaged in cereals, if they would uh, seed every 100 or 150 meter with uh, coriander, sunflower or canola to sustain pollinators, uh, they would keep options open for the next generation. In Europe and in America, farmers are requested uh, to seed wildflower strips. But in the language of a farmer, wildflowers are weeds. Um, so the farmers don't get income uh, from these strips of weeds and uh, even more they um, uh, have the risk that the weeds spread into the field. So they ask for a compensation, for financial compensation and uh, this is paid in Europe and in, in America. Uh, and uh, this is not scalable to low and middle income countries. Uh, farmers supporting uh, pollinators and uh, natural enemies by seeding marketable uh, flowering plants, they get direct income from uh, these flowering strips and they have a better income from the main crop. They can use, for instance, uh, vegetables or fruits or berries. They can use oil seeds or spices uh, or medicinal plants. They can use fava bean or grass bean, or they can use uh, forage plants like clover or lupinos. But I do these trials since 2013. It's the sixth year now. And each year the fab fields uh, have a higher income than the control field. So Abderrahim was control farmer last year. Yeah, exactly, as a in a pumpkin trial. Salam alaikum, Sir Abderrahim. Kida, bechir le masalik se hamzia kham khaya. The habitat enhancement plants also contributed to the income, but the yield of eggplant was amazing. First, a high numbers of flowers produced a fruit. On average, the fab field had 40% more eggplant fruits than control fields in the same area. The main difference was the size. In total, the net income from fab fields was much more higher than a double in comparison with control fields. So not only the farmer but also the fab team was surprised with these good results. The amazing thing for the farmers was that they got this wonderful income with just nothing. The investment in fab fields was three dirhams higher for seed than for control farmers. Around the eggplants we have sunflower, dill, zucchini, coriander, canola and anise. It takes a bit more time to harvest the seeds of the bordering plants than it takes to harvest the eggplants. But when we do the economic assessment, we add some cost for hired labor, though the farmers uh, do the uh, harvesting of the bordering plants themselves. I am ready to invest a bit more time for gaining so high income per surface. Abdurrahim did not have the chance to go to school himself. His father has 15 hectares and 60 sheep. Five families live on this farm and Abdurrahim has already one son. The farmers have to intensify uh, production because they have to sustain their families. I think that's also why they like so much to have some food crops in the habitat enhancement zone. But they have to intensify their production, but in an environmentally friendly way. And FAP is a win-win situation for the farmer and for the environment, because it increases the yields without negative impacts on the environment. I work with a lot of farmers here in Satat region, and they share their experience with neighbors and relatives. We realized uh, the high importance of good pollination for the quality of crops. For instance, last year uh, on the example of eggplant. 
On the left, you see badly pollinated, on the right, well pollinated eggplants. In fab fields, we had good quality, but in control fields, it was mixed with many uh, badly pollinated fruits in between. We did the same experience um, with cucumber before. Our, this apple, it is very much uh, crumbled and it's clearly an uh, impact of bad pollination. So the farmers usually don't bring such apple uh, to the market at all because they cannot sell them. The same problem we have, for instance, with strawberry. If a strawberry does not have uh, sufficient pollination, the fruit is very small. It's often crumbled and uh, it has sometimes uh, brown spots. So you cannot export it uh, to Europe. It's even difficult to sell it here in Morocco. Another example is watermelon. A good watermelon needs uh, 500 uh, pollen grains. So watermelon needs effective pollinators which can carry a lot of pollen by the entire body and attach it to the flower like this wild halictus bee. Uh, whereas this honeybee carries the pollen mainly on the legs and does not attach it uh, to the flower uh, but brings it uh, to the hive uh, to feed the brood. So we are now in Kenifa and uh, we are in the field of uh, Mohamed Kal. Um, he's a, a typical smallholder farmer. He has uh, six children and he does not have an additional job. He has a total of 2.2 uh, hectare, but it's scattered into different fields. He works with us on pub since 2017. Uh, so he has a lot of experience meantime. Uh, Mohamed Kal, when the trials end with FAP, will you continue with FAP? Yes, I will for instance use coriander stripes in different areas of my field. I do that already. Even when the, the field is not part of the Icarda trials, I will also use sunflower, but in smaller spots than coriander. Why did you put the materials here? I just left it there. It is the stems of canola and some branches of a tree. I think this is a very good idea. Keep it. Yeah, look, this here, this will, is old wood, yeah? So later, like the nesting support over there, uh, the bees can make uh, nests, yeah? <coughs> so it's obvious that wild pollinators are very important and beneficial for farmers. But it's not only for farmers, it's for consumers, it's for human uh, well-being, it's for nature. Usually when people hear about pollinators, uh, they think on honeybees, but uh, honeybees provide just 15% of the global services. 85% uh, of the global services are provided uh, by wild pollinators. And uh, they are an economic factor. Uh, 153 billion euro is the value of crop pollination um, in 2005. Meantime, the figure might be higher because we produce more of these uh, crops. Uh, and three quarters of uh, the food crops for direct human consumption depend on pollinators and it's the high value crops it's nuts fruits vegetables spices oil seeds it's cacao coffee tea if we would lose all these crops we would suffer from malnutrition and we would lose many de uh, delicious things we like without wild pollinators no chocolate anymore globally the uh, agricultural dependency on uh, pollinators uh, increases for many decades because we eat more and more fruits, vegetables, spices and so on. Um, in particular, the dry regions uh, shift to pollinator dependent uh, crops because they need uh, less water but give a uh, good income. You see that also uh, Morocco uh, increased uh, their production of pollinator dependent crops a lot during the last uh, 50 years. Honeybees cannot replace wild pollinators out of different reasons. For instance, the flower type, um, fava bean or um, eggplant, they have very specific uh, flower and uh, honeybees can hardly uh, access and do the service e efficiently. But Anthophora, for instance, or bombus uh, or sweet bees, they can provide the service. Honeybees do not pollinate on high altitude. Usually, they don't go higher than 2,500 meters. But we have a lot of orchards and um, uh, other pollinator dependent crops on a high altitude up to uh, 40,000 meter or partly even above. This apple orchard is on 4,000 meter uh, and here buckwheat uh, is as well on um, 4,000 meter. Also, wild uh, pollinators are more robust 
uh, concerning uh, seasonal abnormalities. Honeybees need 15 degree and good weather. Uh, so if the weather is rainy, if uh, the sky is clouded uh, or if uh, it's strong wind, honeybees uh, cannot provide the service even if the hive is in the ocean. Uh, but many wild pollinators uh, can do. Pollinators are even uh, more important uh, for biodiversity uh, than for agriculture. 87% uh, of uh, all flowering plants depend on pollinators. If you lose pollinators, we also lose these flowering plants and the ecosystems, uh, the habitats, they change uh, significantly and in the end they can even uh, collapse. The third uh, important um, key function is that uh, pollinators are important for climate change adaptation. Um, Cross-pollination, going from one flower to the other and transporting uh, pollen from one flower to the other, enhances genetic diversity and thus the chances of plants to adapt to uh, changing uh, climate and environment. I think the most important aspect is that all ecosystem services depend to a high extent on pollinators. As 87% of all flowering plants depend on pollinators, all ecosystem services depending on these 87% of flowering plants are also at risk in case of pollinator loss. If we lose ecosystem services, you see them here on the left in bright green, to some extent simultaneously in a region, this can cause interlinked poverty spirals in this region or, if it happens in many places, globally. This can create conflicts among people and, in the worst case, even military conflicts to get access to food or to regions where ecosystems still function well. So, it is very important to protect pollinators, uh, their abundance and uh, their diversity to avoid such worst uh, case scenario. Uh, and farmers can play a major role in that, either in the negative way that they use more uh, pesticides and they continue uh, making more monocultures and they cause decline, or they enhance their uh, fields and become key contributors to uh, pollinator protection. Uh, Bubaka um, Rabbit, he's a very experienced okay. uh, beekeeper. He is training uh, other beekeepers and uh, he's head of a cooperative here. So uh, we would like to come to know from you what kind of services do you give uh, to your uh, honeybees? The queens lay their eggs in these hives and the worker bees raise the brood here. If it is cold or rainy, also the worker bees usually flying out for pollination have a good shelter in the hive. If the orchard is too far, Often I drop my hives by tractor and bring them to orchards or flowering fields. So I assist them also in transport. At times of nectar and pollen scarcity, I must sustain them with a sweet drink. The wild pollinators, depending on a, a small local habitat, they don't have that. Um, so the, the farmers would have uh, to give more uh, flower diversity with pollen and nectar and safe nesting site and maybe material. Um, and water for drinking and for, for instance, for the surface for mating. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Welcome in my cherry orchard. Usually I have good harvest if Bubker or another beekeeper and his honeybees are around. However, if the weather is cold or rainy, if the sun is absent during flowering, they don't show up, even if the hives are here in the orchard. True, honeybees need good and sunny weather. They need care and are very sensitive to chemicals as well. But they also give good honey. Yeah, this is right. We all like to eat honey and we have to protect uh, honeybees. They are very useful and beneficial uh, animals. There is a lot of research that uh, more uh, nectar and, and pollen plants in agricultural landscapes uh, and less chemicals support the health of honeybees. Therefore, I think the beekeepers and the FAP uh, team, we have the same goal. Uh, we want to protect pollinators uh, and uh, we want to have a healthy agricultural lands. We constructed this bee hotel according to Dr. Patrick's instruction to improve the condition for regeneration of beneficial wild insects. Uh, we had all material on farm or around. Just we spent a day to construct it. Uh, Patrick showed us film of nesting supports in small holder field. 
and how pollinators use them. Yeah. Okay. So did you find already uh, somewhere uh, where the uh, bees uh, went inside? Yes. Look here. Wow. It is full of the area. Wow, that's good oh, yeah. success. Wow. And, but I think it's also very nicely done. Yeah. Here with the clay, with different kinds yeah. of wood, with different size oh, yeah. of holes. Oh, yeah. And here, uh, big and, and yeah. small ones. Yeah. It's very nicely yeah. done. And it is stable. Oh, yeah. Very nicely done. We took this in in spring when we built the beer hotel. So first thing, you should cut the materials, so the wood logs and the bamboo canes, so that they fit inside the container. So now uh, we drill holes into wood lots. So uh, you can make holes between uh, 4 to 10 millimeters, but if you want to best attract the wild bees, especially the mason bees, the holes should be between 5 and 8 millimeters. So many wild bees love to nest in uh, hollow stems or bamboo canes. So to attract these bees into the beer hotel, we decided to simply cut bamboo canes and to keep them compacted into plastic bottles. So for that, we simply cut the plastic bottles with a knife and uh, fill, the knife, uh, fill the plastic bottles with the bamboo canes. So some bees prefer to nest in clay-rich uh, vertical slopes instead of wooden cavities. So to attract such bees, we decided to make clay blocks. So for that, we simply cut a five liter plastic bottles. We fill it up with mud, clay-rich mud. And then once it starts to get dry, we simply poke holes into it. We simply filled up the container with all the items. But there's no rules for that. You just need to be sure that everything is securely compacted inside the container so that nothing falls down because of the wind. So once you're done with the beer hotel, it's very important to protect it against the rain. So for that, you should make, you should make a small roof. So here we made a roof out of wooden plates that we found in the farm of Hassan, but you can use any kind of material. So also to support the ground nesting bees, like the mining bees or the sweet bees, it can be very useful to clear a patch of background around the nest and compact it. Uh, most of the bees here, of the wild bees from Morocco, they make the uh, nest in the soil mm -hmm. and uh, some have to uh, dig really uh, long cavities. So um, producing uh, the nest for the next generation, uh, this can be uh, toxic for, for the wild uh, bees. And it's important uh, to sustain a good soil quality, uh, also to sustain uh, pollinator diversity. So many species of surfeit flies uh, like to nest in uh, water puddles uh, that are uh, full of uh, organic matter, rotting organic matter. So we basically tried to mimic uh, this uh, nesting site. So we basically uh, put t took a container, we filled it up with water and we put some grass cl clippings inside, rotting inside, uh, in the hope to uh, attract uh, surfeit flies that will basically lay their eggs inside and the larvae will feed on this uh, rotting organic material. From all the habitat enhancement plants, which we tested since 2013, the coriander is the most promising plant. Um, first of all, it has a long uh, flowering period, so sometimes uh, six weeks, and it can sustain pollinators for a very long time. Uh, then the flower uh, is very open, and uh, it attracts the highest diversity of different pollinators. It also attracts many uh, natural enemies and even the pests. They think that the uh, coriander is more delicious than the main crop. So often the main crop uh, nearby uh, is less affected uh, by uh, aphids um, than uh, the coriander. Additionally, the farmer uh, they uh, select or collect uh, the dry seeds and uh, they sell them for a good price even. We have uh, some farmers from previous projects in another region. They just use uh, coriander and um, seed it in the entire area uh, for habitat enhancement. With small holders, we talk with the farmer directly. But in the large scale fields, it's important that the farmer also uh, teaches uh, all his uh, labor. And uh, here, for instance, uh, the farmer, Mr. Hafid, explains his new stuff, uh, habitat requirements of uh, wild pollinators, and he shows them uh, the importance of the nesting support. 
Now uh, we are with uh, La Russie uh, Tuil. He's also a farmer here in Kenit. Huh? He has uh, 1.4 uh, hectare uh, and one son and also lives entirely from agriculture. He works with us since uh, 2017 and uh, La Russie is a very attentive farmer. So we get a lot of information uh, from him uh, on uh, the performance of different habitat enhancement plants. Uh, La Russie, I would like to know which habitat enhancement plants which we use uh, this year you would recommend for summer trials like for tomato and which ones uh, you suggest uh, better to take out. Sunflower is good. When I have some sunflower, birds feed themselves in sunflower and don't attack the meat crop. Canola works better for fava bean. Now in May for tomato, it attracts pests which might also affect the meat crop. For spices, if the area is small, they are useful. But mainly, I want to use food crop which we need for ourselves. Coriander is fine. We use it also in the kitchen. For us, it is better than anise. Anise is as attractive as coriander, but we don't know how to use anise for cooking. You um, can use uh, anise very often instead of sugar. Uh, so it's a very healthy sweetener. La Rossi is uh, the first farmer of all who ever tried uh, fab, uh, with a tomato. And uh, La Rossi, how did you plant it at that time? I seeded tomato, zucchini and sunflower in alternating rows amended by some coriander and was very satisfied with the reduction of tomato bother and the economic results. In the following year, I tried to improve the income of green paper by alternating rows with zucchini and potato, again amended by coriander. Here in Kenitra region, uh, the landscape is even more diverse. It's mainly smallholders and um, they have a very good landscape infrastructure. Uh, that's these um, uh, cactus uh, corridors. That is a very safe nesting ground. And if it is planted also horizontally, as you see on the right, then it is also good for erosion control in case of uh, strong rain. So we encourage the farmers uh, to keep these uh, cactus corridors. There is a blackberry. Uh, a nice uh, fruit for children, which is increasingly uh, growing in the cactus. The farmers don't like it because it makes it more difficult to get uh, the cactus fruit. But uh, for the pollinators, it's a good forage because many different pollinators uh, can visit these flowers. We collaborate for outscaling in Morocco with Onka. My name is uh, Jawad Bahaji. I'm the General Director of the National Office for Agricultural Extension. Uh, in 2019, uh, we uh, did a lot of training programs uh, within the framework of a partnership with ICARDA and INA. And this program has allowed us to train many extensionists. And uh, we are ready this year to start implementing uh, the training programs that our extensionists have undergone under this partnership. And we have been in touch with researchers all over the country. And the purpose actually is to share, is to disseminate this very important approach. Uh, also, we will be using the radio, radio channels uh, to keep farmers informed and to keep them updated about what's being done. And if any farmers are in need of information, or instructions, clarifications, please contact Anka. I am Malika El Hassan, and I am Anka's focal point for this IKI project on farming with alternative pollinators. What we can say is that this approach is very innovative and is aligned well with the government's strategy of sustainable agricultural development. As far as outscaling FAP is concerned, we rely on 450 agricultural advisors via farmer field schools, leading edge technologies, brochures, radio programs, and TV spots. Moreover, we will train stakeholders concerning pesticides, such as Onsan, as well as organizations involved in organic farming and beekeepers. So the least we can say is that we all benefit from pollination services, Hence, we all, without any exception, should contribute to the protection of pollinators. 
If you are a farmer or the head of a farmer association, for instance in Algeria, Tunisia, Egypt, Jordan, Palestine or Turkey, the participating countries of uh, this project, and you want to uh, use FAP for your fields, uh, then you can use our field sketches. We did field sketches, planting instructions, we developed them for four ecosystems and um, here you see, for instance, eggplant, uh, and we show uh, the habitat enhancement plants uh, with photos, so also illiterate farmers uh, can benefit. So, uh, now uh, we have uh, Zucchini, also in the semi-arid region. This is the uh, field sketch for fava bean. Now we have melon and pumpkin. We move to the uh, mountainous region, there we did uh, also orchard crops like apple. We do the habitat enhancement be uh, plants between the trees. Uh, we have sherry, fava bean, uh, pumpkin and zucchini. In the region with adequate rainfall we have uh, fava bean, tomato, eggplant, zucchini and now we go uh, to the oasis we did in Morocco in Erachidia uh, with apple, okra and zucchini. So if you want to use uh, uh, these field sketches then first decide what is the best seeding time of the main crop in your country. Then check if you have all the habitat enhancement plants in your country. If for instance you don't grow a watermelon, just replace it by something else. And if you are not sure if the plant really attracts pollinators, you can ask a beekeeper. Yeah, and then uh, try to um, schedule the seeding in a way that about two thirds of the uh, habitat enhancement plants flower at the same time as the main crop and one third before or afterwards so that you can give uh, pollen and nectar uh, to pollinators for a long time. You can use uh, FAP for more crops than we uh, used in Uzbekistan and Morocco. Based on the crops uh, here in Morocco, we prepared this table which shows farmers the differences uh, in pollinator dependency. There are crops highly dependent on pollinators and others uh, less or not at all. The more pollinator dependent uh, the crop is, the more uh, bee symbols uh, we drew. In case of pollinator loss, farmers can have high productivity loss, uh, in particular for those crops with many bee symbols, up to 90%. So, for instance, you want to uh, grow a melon, watermelon, zucchini or pumpkin. They have highest dependency on pollinators. For these crops, it is very important uh, to take care that you will have high pollinator diversity. You can use the FAP approach and enhance your yields. We did uh, trials in Morocco uh, also with several crops from the second group. Uh, so with cucumber, apple and sherry and uh, we had high income in, uh, increase uh, from FAP fields. Uh, actually, we did cucumber and sherry also in Uzbekistan and from that experience we know that FAP is really replicable across continents because the pollinator diversity in Central Asia and in uh, Morocco is very different. We uh, tested FAP here in Morocco also with crops uh, from uh, the third group with okra, uh, eggplant and fava bean uh, for several years and we had very high income increase in FAP as well in comparison to control. In uh, the third region, fava bean flowers in March. So at that time, uh, there are no high income uh, habitat enhancement plants available. So in the field sketch, we used also forage plants like alfalfa and cultivated uh, lupinos. Of course, the farmers like more uh, food crops or spices or um, oil seeds because they give much higher income, but they are not available. Anyway, uh, the FAP fields um, had much higher income uh, than the control uh, fields and we did uh, trials with fava bean for several years. 
cross-pollination significantly uh, increases the number of seeds per pot. And we have higher number of seeds uh, per pot uh, from fab fields than from control fields. Also, the size of the single uh, seed is bigger from fab fields than from control fields on average. And uh, as many farmers here in Morocco sell the dry uh, beans, uh, this is quite important for them to know. So we thought we test even uh, for the uh, lowest group. So we did with tomato and we did it in Kenitra. In Kenitra, the environment for pollinators is still good and also there are many beekeepers. So we expected that the uh, impact of FAP is lower. But we had high income increase in FAP fields in comparison uh, to control. Uh, so if I would be a farmer, I would use FAP uh, in the entire field and uh, seed strips. And uh, yeah, I would like to benefit from, from better yield and probably I would feel myself also like a hero for the environment because I protect pollinators. Let me introduce you to Mr. Mostafa Madbouhi. He is the focal point for the Convention for Biological Diversity and thus in charge of everything related to pollinators and to biodiversity, including IPES. Morocco can play, uh, play a very important role on uh, poly pollinator protection. Morocco is the first uh, Arab country which joined the coalition of the willing on uh, pollinator. Uh, we seen it it's in 10 uh, May 2019. The coalition is a group of uh, foreigner countries for pollinator protection. It was established uh, during the, confer the conference of party of CBD. Most of these uh, mean times 25 for uh, foreign countries are from Europe. Some countries prepare the national strategy for penetral protection mean times, but they are very costly. Whereas here in Morocco, we want to develop a model of pollinator protection which can be adopted also by low-income countries. We focus on the introduction of FAP because farmers have an interest in high income per surface. FAP also reduces the need to use uh, chemicals. This is important for pollinator protection as well. We want to enhance the common knowledge on pollinator in the entire population, using also media, social media, and probably schools. There are many options to sustain pollinators for low cost but high benefits. A cross-sector policy mix reduces the costs for pollinator protection and moves forward from isolated pollinator protection, for instance by paid wildflower strips, towards sustainable society. Key actors are Ministry for the Environment. Take the lead to join the Coalition of the Willing on Pollinators and advocate for a national policy and action plan for pollinator protection. Monitor diversity and abundance of pollinators. Ministry for Agriculture and Forestry. Introduce FAP broadly. Set into force an ambitious regulation for pesticides. Ministry for Education. Include lessons on pollinators in school curricula. Ministry for Information. Promote four to five broadcasts on pollinators in mass media per year. Ministry for Tourism. Conduct a yearly competition for the best performing region for promotion as ecotourism site for pollinator protection. Ministry of Interior. Protect valuable landscape architecture like hedgerows or other corridors. Involve as many governmental and non-governmental actors as possible. Everybody can contribute to pollinator protection by teaching others, conservation activities or consumer decision. And everybody will benefit. In this way, FAP and pollinator protection can contribute to five sustainable development goals. Combat poverty by better farm income. Combat hunger and malnutrition by higher food security. Contribute to health by reduced chemicals and more vitamins. Contribute to climate change adaptation by sustaining cross-pollination. And contribute to biodiversity protection 
sustaining flowering plants and their ecosystem services. Thank you all for contributing to this film and to pollinator protection. In particular, I want to say thank you to all farmers. If you want to translate this film to more languages, please contact me. I enjoy to be part of this research project. I look at my field and at insects visiting my field now with different eyes. I understood that it is in my own very best interest to sustain them and I want to benefit from them. It is really worth the little effort. I really encourage Moroccan farmers to contact Onca and start as well using FAB. And to farmers in other countries, I want to say, start as well and enjoy the experience of better income. Thank you for your attention and good luck in saving our planet for pollinators and pollinators for our planet. I'm sure together we can do it.